Hello and welcome to this educational video on how to insert a suprainguinal fascia iliaca catheter. The first step will be to consent and then prepare your patient with an intravenous cannula, standard non-invasive monitoring in a suitable environment with a trained assistant. Your assistant can prepare a sterile field for you as shown here while you scrub up for the procedure. Expose your patient's hip and groin area and spray the area with 0.5% chlorhexidine as shown here and allow this to dry. Use sterile sticky drapes to prepare the hip area. You will need access to the lower abdomen, so avoid draping too low. Patients will not thank you for sticking drapes to their pubic hair, so protect this with the sterile gauze or a sterile towel if necessary. Your assistant will provide you with a 50mm ultrasound probe covered with some sterile jelly. Use a large tegaderm dressing to cover the probe head and provide sterility. You can choose to pick off all the backing paper off the tegaderm, but this is quite tricky to do and isn't necessary. Use one more sticky drape to cover the probe head. Take care when doing this so that the ultrasound probe cable does not desterilize your field. Start by placing the ultrasound probe obliquely over the anterior superior iliac spine and slowly moving it medially and inferiorly along the inguinal ligament. And then make small adjustments to optimise your image. In this scan we can see the dropout shadow caused by the anterior superior iliac spine and as the probe moves immediately, this becomes smaller until we reach the anterior inferior iliac spine. At this point, move the probe superiorly to see the iliacus muscle delving into the pelvis. Then make small adjustments to the probe to enhance the bright white line of the iliacus fascia. Make sure you scan the area using colour mode on the ultrasound machine to find any vessels that could potentially be in your needle path, as there are in this scan. Step 3 is the stop before you block, which is an important safety initiative and it is vital that this is performed prior to any needle being inserted into the patient. Notice now that the camera position has changed and that the patient's head is now on the right hand side of the screen. It is now time to anaesthetise the skin of the planned entry point using a few millilitres of lignocaine and an orange needle. Step 4 is to connect one end of the extension tubing to your needle and pass the other end to your assistant who can prime it with local anaesthetic. Step 5. Now it is time to perform the block. Warn the patient that they will feel some pressure on their groin area and then puncture the skin. This will take some force as the needle is not sharp. Advance the needle only when you have good ultrasound vision of the tip. There will be some tough fascia layers through which you must pass and you can get a sense of when these pops occur in this video. Notice that there is an artery near the needle tip in this block, which must be avoided. When you think you are beneath the iliacus fascia, aspirate and inject 1ml of local anaesthetic and assess the spread on ultrasound. If you do not see clear separation of the muscles on injection, make fine adjustments to the needle tip position and try again. The spread here looks good, there is downward displacement of the iliacus muscle and there is no honeycombing which would suggest intramuscular injection. Once you have created a pocket of local anaesthetic, you can safely advance your needle into this to encourage proximal spread of the anaesthetic. Here you can see the bulk of the local anaesthetic is being injected and the spread continues to look good on ultrasound. Your assistant will aspirate every 5 ml of injection and will tell you if the injection pressure becomes high. It should be an easy injection if you are within the correct plane.
Stage 6 is the insertion of the catheter. Secure the needle hub with your hand and disconnect the extension tubing. Take the catheter which you will have placed somewhere within easy reach and begin to thread this into the needle. The catheter is marked with single dots at centimetre intervals and by two dots at 10 centimetres and three dots at 15 centimetres. Aim to leave 10 centimetres under the fascia iliaca. In practice, this means the catheter should be somewhere between 10 and 15 centimetres at the skin. If you wish, you can ultrasound the catheter at this stage. Otherwise, remove the wire from within the catheter. And then remove the needle, taking care not to allow the catheter to slip out too much. Before securing the catheter, apply tincture of benzoin, which is an antiseptic, and dermabond glue around the catheter entry site. Take a 16 gauge locket device and thread this onto the catheter. Apply some more dermabond if necessary, and then thread down the locket device, peel away the foil backing, and stick this down securely. Then fold back the catheter and firmly clip it into place. Apply some more dermabond glue to where you wish to fix the filter, bearing in mind the surgeon's access to the hip during surgery. Coil up the catheter and stick this down onto the glue. Take a clear adhesive dressing and use this to cover the catheter coil and the exit side of the catheter from the skin. You may need more than one dressing to cover the whole area. Assemble the clamp and filter and prime this with sterile local anaesthetic or saline. Connect the catheter into the clamp. Open the fixer long device and clip the shell part onto the bacterial filter. Then click this into the adhesive part of the fixer long device. Peel off the foil. And stick this onto the patient's abdomen, again away from the surgeon's field. Aspirate the filter to ensure no blood enters the catheter and then flush to confirm patency of the catheter. It will feel slightly harder to inject via the catheter than it did via the needle and extension tubing, but this is normal and should not be worried about. Last section is documentation. This means ensuring the block room anaesthetic chart is completed and the prescription is done on paper as well as on e-record using the Necathema order set. Congratulations, the block is now done. Reassure your patient that the block will work, although it can take up to 30 minutes for this to fully develop. After a period of observation, your patient can be discharged back to the ward with their infusion pump connected.